Hey everybody, and welcome to another Inner Shutter Modeler. In this video, we're going to make a phaser rifle. Alright, so what you see displayed here on my iPad is a Star Trek 3B phaser rifle. Of course, there are many versions of the Star Trek rifle. This is from the Star Trek Next Generation universe and was seen in the movie Star Trek First Contact. And it's one version I've always wanted in my collection. Well, I came across a kit on eBay the other day that looked pretty accurate. Let me go ahead and show you what comes in the kit. Alright, so first let me go ahead and pull away and give you a wide shot of the entire kit. And as you can see, the kit is molded in a black resin, some of which has been sanded already. That's why it has a sort of hazy appearance to it. Let's go and uh, review the pieces here that come with the kit. So this, of course, is the muzzle of the weapon. Now, you'll find that um, as you look at these kits online, many of them will claim that they are molded from uh, an actual studio prop, and the same has been said about this kit as well. Uh, as I look at the pieces, though, they do look pretty accurate compared to the pictures that I've seen online of the studio prop. So it's very possible this has been molded uh, from uh, a studio accurate representation. Um, the kit is molded again in a black resin, and uh, the reason why it looks white in certain areas is that some of it's already been sanded a little bit here. Uh, as with most resin kits, you're going to have to deal with some surface imperfections, which we definitely have our share of. As we go along the surface, you can see that. Let me show you the opposite side here. It's a little smoother on this side. This now is the rear section of the rifle. And on the opposite side is an open area here, which is great because this is where, where we're going to mount our power source for our LEDs. I do plan on lighting the kit, and um, so we're going to have to make some accommodations for this. I'm going to have to drill a hole straight through here uh, to allow us to feed our wires from the power source. Uh, I'm not sure how I'm going to wire the switch just yet. And this is what the top looks like here. Okay, again, you can see some surface bubbles that we have to fill in. So it definitely looks a little rough, but um, not anything too unusual uh, when it comes to these resin kits. Uh, the quality will vary from one kit to the next, but I think this is very workable. And what we have here now is the top section, and this housing accommodates some of the lighting, including the uh, front spotlight, as well as a rear sight. And then there's an orange piece that's supposed to fit on top of here, so all this has to be cut out. We have a mounting piece here for the shoulder strap. There's a strap that actually um, goes the length of the weapon from the front all the way to the rear. Um, and that's what this piece is here, is to cover this hole or opening. And you can see there is this indentation, which we need to cut out. Uh, the strap actually feeds from here all the way along the length of the weapon. And as I understand it, there was a retracting system, much like a seatbelt of a car, that you would pull on the strap to extend it and to retract it. Um, I'm not going to mount anything like that. I'm just going to go ahead and mount the strap so that we have it along the length of the weapon. Another piece that's included is this clear uh, piece that fits onto the rear of this housing, which looks really nice. It has the targeting uh, markings here. We've got this piece, which will mount our light into. And uh, I'm going to modify that with this piece here that I pulled out of a, uh, a flashlight. And uh, that'll give us more reflection for our LED. And then this is the orange piece that needs to be cut into place here. And then we have our shoulder strap. And then this is a board that uh, we mount to the bottom of this housing. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get started. The first step is going to be to fill in these imperfections here. I'm going to use Bondo for that. And then we'll work on clearing all this up and sanding the surface away, making it nice and smooth. All right, let's go ahead and begin. Well, I decided to go ahead and fill in the surface imperfections with this Bondo glazing putty. This stuff is typically used for cars. Uh, this, of course, is to fill in all these surface imperfections. And uh, so I'm going to allow this to dry. I still have more work to do. Uh, working in a well-ventilated area, as well as uh, using a filtered mask, as I sand here, I don't want to breathe in any of this resin here. It's toxic. So just make sure if you work with this material, you take those precautions. Well, I'm afraid this process has been taking a lot longer than I anticipated. There are a number of defects on the surface 
of the rifle that needed to be taken care of, particularly with the back end here. Unfortunately, one major defect was the front end of the handle here, which was um, completely malformed uh, during the molding process. So I had to create a new tip here, so I'm gradually molding this into uh, the shape that we need here. Uh, and what I used was this plastic weld putty by JMB. And uh, you just uh, essentially cut off a piece here and you knead it together until it's an even color. And then you apply it onto the surface that you're needing to uh, use the putty. And you just mold it into the shape that you need and you allow it to dry. And it dries pretty solid here. Uh, I used this stuff on the uh, Stormtrooper modification that I did way back when, when I um, modified that toy. Uh, but this is so far working out okay. It's not uh, quite yet to the uh, uh, level that I'd like it to be, so I'm going to be working at this a bit more and maybe use more glazing putty to make a smoother transition here. All right, this is how the handle turned out. Overall, looks pretty good here. I could smooth a little bit more here. Um, it is on the bottom of the rifle, so we're not really going to see that a whole lot, so may not spend too much more time on that. Well, the one thing about working with a kit like this, uh, and I just have to emphasize, is that if you've never worked with resin kits, you really will come to realize they're just not 100% perfect. There are a lot of surface imperfections you have to deal with, and if you're a perfectionist, you will spend a lot of time doing that. Um, I'm just going to have to come to terms with uh, the fact that it's not going to be 100%, and I'm just going to have to be satisfied with what I've done. Every time I turn around, there's another imperfection that you can see right here that I've missed, so I have to smooth that out. And uh, so I'll continue to work a little bit here and there on some of these other uh, areas, but uh, I'm just going to have to get to the point where I'll just have to be satisfied. All right, so I've made some significant progress here now, and I'm ready to glue the two pieces together. Uh, first of all, I wanted to let you know I did drill all the way through this here to accommodate our wire. Remember, we're going to house our battery here. Uh, just a note here about getting through this uh, piece here. It was a bit challenging. Uh, an oversight on my part is I was uh, running the drill uh, at usual speed and then the drill bit was spinning fast enough it melted the plastic around it and as it did so it became stuck inside so it took a bit of maneuvering to get that back out and then I just proceeded a lot slower the second time around and then eventually broke through. So if you're going to do a project like this uh, just bear in mind to uh, take your time as you get through that. The other thing, I have some guide wires uh, threaded through here to help us uh, position our LEDs that are going to go in here. And I've prepped this here as well for painting. This is the housing, of course, for the flashlight and some of the other pieces that are going to be lit there. And uh, yeah, I'm ready to go ahead and use a two-part epoxy then to glue this uh, half to this one here. The other thing I want to mention is if you want to get a kit like this, uh, you can contact John at MessedUpTS at AOL.com. I came across this kit uh, really by accident on eBay. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I've always wanted a Star Trek rifle in my uh, collection. As you know, I collect uh, some replica props and I do uh, like uh, weapons in particular. And I came across this one. It looked pretty accurate. And so I purchased the kit for over $200, and I know that sounds pricey, but it is a full-size replica of the rifle, and you'll find that's pretty much the going rate if you're trying to get a replica of something like this. Uh, he does have other kits available, in particular Star Trek kits. He also has other versions of the Star Trek rifle, so you can contact him again for more information. The other thing I want to emphasize is if you have limited experience with resin kits or uh, have never worked with one and you want to uh, build a kit like this, just be prepared to devote that time to address all those surface imperfections. Obviously, it's going to you know, vary from kit to kit. The one problem I did have that I did make John aware of is there were sections that were literally chipping away, at least the surface layers were, and so that required that I... Uh, take a bit more time with this stuff here, and uh, really it took more time than I thought it was going to take. So uh, he mentioned he's going to be doing some stuff to the molding process to prevent that, so hopefully he'll address those issues. Just wanted to also spend another minute just to uh, give kudos to this plastic weld stuff from JB Weld. Uh, this I proved to be invaluable in this particular project, and you'll find uh, with resin projects like this, if there's a defect, uh, you can overcome that by uh, utilizing this sort of stuff here. It's very easy to work with, as you saw, so keep that in mind if you are going to work with a project like this. Well, as for the paints now, I'm going to be using this Rust-Oleum color here. This is a silver metallic. Most of the rifle will be painted with that. 
Got a few darker panels on the rifle. They're going to be painted with this Tamiya uh, light gunmetal color. And then for the black, I decided to use this rubber black. So I'm going to go ahead and proceed with that. I'm going to end this video here. Of course, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me here on my YouTube channel or at nshedlemonder at gmail.com. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you then in part two. Take care.